Well, hello, welcome again to our journey into complex analysis, and we've been having a look at Laurent series. We introduced those in the previous video, and now I want to see what, what we can do with these, and what you'll see why we introduced them in the first place. So we've seen how to create these sort of exotic looking series, which converge in various parts of the complex plane. Do they have any useful part in the theory of complex integration? Well, indeed, they turn out to play a very central part in the theory. And I'm going to show you, one of, I think, one of the most beautiful and remarkable theorems in mathematics, which is you're about to see coming along here now, and it will introduce the notion of a residue. So we take a function f of z at the moment with one singularity at z0, and I'm going to expand it as a Laurent series about that very singularity. So we're going to expand our uh, series and it will converge for mod z minus z naught is bigger than naught. So as long as we're not standing it on z naught, the series will converge uh, as a Laurent series. Now, the series converges uniformly in this region, so I can integrate it term by term around a closed contour gamma containing Z0. So Z0 is some uh, point inside gamma. We've got the expansion here. Now, we firstly look at the if I, what happens when I integrate each of these terms here. Well, these are all analytic functions. So when I integrate an analytic function around a closed contour, then you get zero. So when you in start integrating across this series here, the integral of all of this bit all vanishes, this disappears. Okay, well now we're going to integrate this bit along here. So if we, if we in now integrate, uh, that, that's by Cauchy's theorem, so that means... Um, uh, all of the these coefficients are zero. Also, if we now look at the integrating the, the rest of it, then by the generalized Cauchy integral formula, if k is bigger than one, that is if k is two, three, four, and so on, when you integrate these terms, well, you have to differentiate the numerator at least once, but it's a constant, so that's going to give you zero. So there's not much left. The only term left that survives is this one, when you integrate this one, and we know how to do that one, we can take the a sub minus 1 out, you just get 2 pi i, again by Cauchy's integral formula, and that means the integral of this f that we started with now is just given by this formula. So f, remember, was any function which is analytic except at a point z0, and gamma was a contour containing z0. And we can now integrate this. The answer is it's 2 pi i times this funny number, this a sub minus 1, which, remember, was, the, was just the term in here. Okay, so we've seen that if you integrate all these terms, you get 0. Integrate all these terms, you get 0. Integrate this one, you just get 2 pi i times this number up the top. This is the coefficient of the first z minus z0 term in the denominator to the power 1. Now, that number, a sub minus 1, is called the residue of the function at z0. Uh, it's called residue because, it's, in some sense, it's what's left over when we integrate the series. All that's left, the remaining part, is this, this bit. Now, we'll have a look at how to use this in a moment. Let me just mention some terminology here. We say that a punctured disk is an annulus of the form Z such that, uh, well, we, we have essentially a circle, centre Z0 radius R, or a disk, I should say, inside of, uh, a d disk of radius less than uh, R, and but we're excluding Z0 itself. So it's like a... It's like a, a disk, but the, the center has been removed. So a function f has a singularity at a point z0 in C, if it's not analytic at that point. But it is. Uh, but each neighborhood of z0 contains points where it is analytic. So in other words, a singularity is a point where the function um, 
is not a analytic, but it's analytic nearby that point. An isolated singularity of a function is a point z0, so that f has a singularity of z0, but f is analytic at all points in some epsilon neighbourhood of z0. Most singularities we encounter in practice are going to be isolated. So, example of one which is not, this is a standard example here to look at cosec 1 over z, and to show that at z equals naught, uh, this singularity is not isolated. If you th think about this a bit, you'll see you, this has a sequence of singularities that are all getting smaller and smaller, and whatever open circle you draw around zero, there's going to be singularities inside of it, so the function won't be analytic. So that's roughly what this question is about. Finally, we state the celebrated residue theorem, which says suppose has f has isolated singularities at alpha k, k equals 1 up to n, and you've got residues beta k, at residue for each singularity. Gamma is a simple closed contour containing each of the singularities. Then here's the result. The integral around gamma is just 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. That is, the integral around a gamma is just 2 pi i. You work out the residue at each singularity and you add them all up. It's the sum of the residues. So a function which is analytic except at a finite number of isolated singularities is going to be called a meromorphic function. So we're going to have a look at uh, using the residue theorem. Later on we'll do this in a much quicker way, but we're going to do it by Laurent series here. We're going to work out this integral, which by the way, of course, you could work out by Cauchy's integral formula, which we've done before, but I'm going to, I'm going to recalculate this integral uh, using Laurent series and residues. And here's the work solution to this. So here's our integral. Now, the first thing I do with this is I'm going to draw a little picture. There's my contour, mod z equals 3. We've got two singularities inside the contour, one at minus 1 and 1. And I need then to work out the residue at each of the singularities. So I'm going to start with z equals 1. So I have to take this function and I've got to expand this as a Laurent series in powers of z minus 1. So, um, I factor the bottom. This is already in powers of z minus 1. So leave it alone. So take that out here. Now e to the z, I'm going to write as e to the z minus 1 times e to the 1. And the z plus 1, I'm going to write as z plus minus 1 plus 2. I want everything in terms of z powers of z minus 1. So little bit of manipulation here with this. Uh, this function, the 1 over z plus 1, um, will have, I want a Taylor series for this one, because I'm thinking of expanding that around this point here, thinking of put, taking a little a neighbourhood of that one. So in a neighbourhood of that, this much of the function will have a Taylor series. So I fact, uh, do the usual thing. I've taken an a out, I factor out the constant term, which is 2, I take that with that, that's where this is coming from, and then here I've got 1 plus z plus 1 over 2, and this bit here we can expand out, 1 over this we can expand out as a geometric series. And then, so I get uh, e over z minus 1, uh, now, I have to expand e to the z minus 1. I've got to expand also as a Taylor series. So e to the z minus 1 is 1 plus z minus 1 plus z minus 1 squared on factorial 2 plus dot dot dot. And I expand 1 over 1 plus z plus 1 over 2 as a geometric series in here plus dot dot dot. Now, you take a deep breath and expand it out, and the first term you're going to come to will be e over 2z minus 1, from that term times that one. And plus dot, 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 and the rest of it I don't care about, because I'm only interested in the residue. And the residue is this much here. 
It's the coefficient of 1 over z minus 1. So there's the residue, it's e over 2. We use this notation res for residue of f at z equals 1. And now I've got to do the, all the same calculations around z equals minus 1. That is, I want things in powers of z plus 1. So I keep the 1 over, that's already in powers of z plus 1, so you leave it alone. You write e to the z, z to the z plus 1, and you, then you've got to multiply by e to the minus 1. And then z minus 1, you write as z plus 1 minus 2. And then we do exactly what we did before. Peel off this bit here, uh, take your e, you get this here. I need to expand the exponential off as a Taylor series, and I need to expand this as a geometric series. So there's the expansion of the e, the e to the z plus 1. There's the first few terms of the geometric series. And again, you take the brackets out, because you only want the residue. And there's the residue again here. There's the residue minus 1 over 2e. So the residue at z equals minus 1 is minus 1 over 2e. Finally then the residue theorem says to get the integral that we wanted, you take 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. And of course that simplifies to just shine 1. So that's a nice that's a, a example there of how we, can, how we use the Laurent series and the residue theorem. Little uh, challenge problem to play with. This is a, again a lovely uh, problem. You've got n as a positive integer. By expanding in series we're going to find the, uh, the residue of this by simply expanding this out using the binomial theorem and then you've got 1 over z and you just want the residue. So you just want the coefficient of 1 over z in the Laurent series. Having done that then, now take a unit circle and write down the value of this in the unit circle. That's using the residue theorem. And then finally, hence show that this, uh, hence deduce this integral here, which is a very famous one, a very important one. So it said this tells us how to integrate um, from 0 to 2 pi cos of 2n theta d theta. It's just 2 pi times this expression with factorials and powers. So that's a nice problem to, for you to play with. Now, the, you will see that uh, in that previous example, I had to do a lot of work. I had to expand all these series out, all these Laurent series, just to get one number out of the series, that is the residue. And so in our next uh, section, we're going to see how to um, extract the residue from the function without doing all the hard work of work finding the Laurent series. And we'll look at that in the next uh, recording.